<laughs> I don't even know what to... <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think you need to go to the doctors and have a new clacker valve fitted. Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on the show this week. We have new bikes galore as Crankworks get into a full swing at Whistler. Yeah, and there's some really cool new stuff from Pock. Kamut have got a tech update and there's also some new rubber from Maxis. Okay, so straight into news and there is the new Kona Process 134. So that's a 134 mil travel bike out back. Um, it runs a 140 fork up front. There's 29 and 27 half inch options. Uh, just the single one mind with the 27 half. It's a bit more budget friendly, but it's still there for those that want to shred the smaller wheels. Uh, there's five models in the 29 inch wheel. There's carbon models, which are full carbon now. It's um, got a lot going on, eh? Oh man, this, this bike is fully loaded. And unlike previous carbon bikes from Kona, it's actually got carbon seat stays as well. Um, sorry, chain stays. They did oh, have okay. the alloy ones previously. Yeah on there, so it's a full carbon option, but there's also the alloy ones, and this is them on screen. I actually think the alloy ones look really nice. Yeah. I don't see any reason for anyone to uh, feel the need to spend more money, but that carbon one is still pretty They are pretty, pretty cool, nice looking. It's similar to that, the 111 back in the day, which you I were a fan of, eh? Absolutely love that bike. Yeah, I mean, it's equally, it's pretty aggressive, so this has got more travel than the 111, uh, but it's got 427 mil chainstay, which is super tight. Super short, tight. yeah. The 111 had, uh, 430 mil chain stays, and it's got 425 chain stays on that 27 and a half. So it's a little manual monster. Yeah. I think if this little bike. I find it pretty amazing how wheels got bigger and chain stays have still got shorter for some companies. Yeah, and I was always <laughs> against that until I rode that 111, and it's it's an anomaly as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, I don't like short chain stays, but Kona seemed to make it work mm -hmm. somehow. I don't know what their recipe is. <laughs> um, so there's four sizes available in both the 29 and the 27 and a half. In the 29, the reach goes from 425 to 510, Ooh. and in the 27 and a half, it's 400 to 510 across those four sizes. Wow, wow. so it covers covers a pretty good breadth of range. Something for, for everyone, pretty yeah. much. And again, the shorter travel bikes proving themselves to be a really attractive option, I think, for a lot of riders oh, yeah. right now. Totally, and we've also got, speaking of a bike that is popular with the masses, the new Caliber Bosna. So this is a super cool bike. Not only is it, you know, quite progressive in what it's offering. There's that word again, I keep bringing it up, progressive. <laughs> but it's absolutely banging value and available in retailers. Yeah, the so it's pricing's not just unreal. Sell, but I can't believe it. And to look at it, it's got Eagle now with that new SX. Yeah, so it's a full 12 speed transmission now. Yeah, yeah, it's got the kind of slightly more refined looking black fork legs. Yeah. It looks really yes. tidy. So that's a good fork as well as the 12 set. That's the recon, isn't it? So yeah. that's one of the cheaper RockShox forks, but it's had an overhaul and it's The S35 is it now, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's a really good little fork. But that means as well that it uses the same seal size as the Pike and the Lyric. Oh, a nice will, little upgrade you yeah. can do in there with really some useful. stuff. Really useful, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the, the thing I love about Calibre bikes is the fact it's such a small, in fact, it's a single man pretty much behind this brand. Um, you get them via Go Outdoors, which is a huge outdoor chain, kind of like REI sort of thing that you get in the States. Uh, and you get a little discount card with them. So this bike's only 1100 quid in the UK with the discount card. Oh, wow. like, so it's, it's a lot of bike for not it's much money. Bloody cheap. And it's all hand-picked stuff on there to get it to that price. Yeah, I think it's just awesome. And it's very sensible. It's, you know, yeah, it just seems like a really well thought out bike. And I just think that's great. I think it's just a really good antidote for a lot of the complaints sometimes people have about the bike industry. I, you cannot go wrong with that for the money. I think it's fantastic. Um, like you were saying, actually, there's a few updates on it as well. So it's a hydroformed frame. Uh, the previous models, far as I know, is quick release 135, and now it's bolt through, Ooh. so everything has stepped forward. Mm -hmm. So it's a much more modern bike. Um, the previous model is still great value, but this one is a banger. Yeah, super, really good. super cool. Um, next up was something you spotted a little while back on Instagram. It's that new Maxxis tyre. Oh, the good day. Well, the good day. Yes, yeah, it's actually called the Dissector. <laughs> it doesn't um, sound the same when I, I say. I know. It. It's just, it's just, the good day sounds better, doesn't it? As well, <laughs> yeah. and that cool little graphic it yeah. had. Um, so it's the Troy Brosnan signature tyre. So he's developed this in conjunction with Maxxis. Um, it's aimed really as being a rear tyre for aggressive riding, hooking up with maybe like an Azagai or um, a Mini and DHF or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but Max is actually say it makes a really good trail tire if you run it front yeah, and rear yeah. for something that's just a bit quicker and not quite as aggressive. It's designed to be fast rolling and the shape of the ramps allow it to roll fast but also cut cut in basically under braking. So like a DHR2 really, the yeah. sort of wedge shape. 
I wonder if we're kind of seeing the DHF and the DHR fading from Max's range. It feels like the Acer guy stole a lot of the Minion DHFs for lunch. Yeah. And this seems to be kind of doing away with the scraps. So it's, you know, I wonder if there's a bit of a shake-up. It's a very special couple, isn't it? Yeah. Those two tires. Staples for... I, I think you're right, how long. but what I'd like to see is a renewed yeah. DHF yeah, and R because as a, as a combo set of tyres, they're pretty flipping good. Yeah. I always like the F front and rear, actually. I always like the R front and rear, yeah. weirdly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, totally. It's um, great stuff. A whole host of different sizes on those, 27Rs, 29s, EXO casing, DD casing. Uh, they're kind of all there, really. It's maxes. So um, this is it on the screen. So POC have got some new helmet technology out there. And POC are super safe anyway. They've got their spin technology, so that's like the shearing pads that go on the inside yeah. uh, for rotational injury prevention. But they've got a new thing called NFC, so that's near field communication. That's the kind of thing you get on your phone and whatnot. Yeah, so, right. okay. so this is, I didn't really realize how much is involved in this. So it's got a chip in the helmet. So that's independent of the RECO chip, which is like, um, emits a beacon effectively you know, so rescue so services can get this, you. Is this for Tinder compatible? <laughs> I reckon you, yeah, you probably find people. Ah, it's interesting where they go with this. <laughs> Some, you know, cross bike romance. Nice work box. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's safe romance as well with the helmet <laughs> on. But, um, but, but on a serious note, this NFC stuff, right? So it's got a chip in the helmet. It doesn't require battery. It doesn't require, well, it doesn't require anything. It's in the helmet and you can constantly upload information to it that can be read by a smartphone. Holy so, moly. so if you knock yourself out in the middle of the Alps or whatever, and someone finds you, you got that helmet on. They can scan it, and the emergency services are working with NFC technology, which I, I think is absolutely amazing. That is very. And cool. already from them saying just those few lines, you know, in your golden hour time where you're knocked out mm -hmm. and you really need yes. attention, I think all helmets should have that technology. Yeah. It makes a lot. It's a bit like a dog tag, but yeah, exactly that. Yeah, except it's, it's always there. You can't lose it. It's part part of your and it's your pretty cool. That combined with say Garmin's feature of. You know, the, the emergency beacon. That's right, yeah. You know I mean? It's getting... It's safety cool. tech is getting <laughs> yeah, actually really, really, really good. good these days. Um, so that's available in a Tectile race spin, which is the current model anyway, and it's now going to have the NFC technology in it. Uh, it's also available in some of the road helmets, but it's also a new helmet. I don't know if you spotted that. That Axiom. Oh, um, yes. This is the new one on the screen now. Uh, so it's another mountain bike trail helmet. It's got spin technology in it. It's also got breakaway peak, which is quite cool, I think. Yeah, totally. Um, I'd, personally, I'd be gutted if my peak broke off. I'd have to stop riding, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, welcome. Uh, yeah, can't, can't be seen without a peak, can you? But, but I guess it is a good idea, jokes aside, because peaks are getting quite big on bike yeah. helmets now, and if you do hit your head and it moves the helmet, yeah. that's, that's not a good thing. Yes, totally. You essentially acts as a big pivot yeah. for everything else. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But um, more good safety stuff from Pock. They also had those pretty cool glasses. Ah, oh, yeah, now, yeah. I'm not sure those. if I could kind of pull them off myself. I'd love, I think they kind of, with a bike helmet, I reckon mm. they'd look on because a dime. Because they split them between road and off-road now, haven't yes. they? Because there's the ones I think we all use, the clarity lenses yes. in and, and various and different frames. Yeah. Uh, craves, yeah, that's right. Keen to see these in the flesh. I'm a big fan of their lenses, that clarity lens. Um, in heart, well, saturates, okay, oversaturates browns and greens. So when you're in the woods, it's quite good with shadows and like holes yeah, and things. It kind of wow. keeps it all looking quite flat so you can actually see see that stuff uh, definitely good in the UK where you never get full sun you just kind of get dappled, dappled light <laughs> yeah, dappled all light. the time oh. <laughs> um, uh, more, more tech as well um, Kamut have got a new improved version of their app okay um, so talk me through this yeah how would you define commute, commute to perhaps someone that doesn't use it? So commute, I would say, is a bit of software for planning routes and oh, navigation, okay. yeah. and you load those routes onto your device, whatever that so might be. So you can do it at home. Yeah. Bang on. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, but the cool thing about this is previously devices used, um, let me just get my terminology right, uh, they used a system called raster files rather oh, than vector files. Yes, so, I know the one. Yes. So, so raster file, it's not what you think, right? <laughs> I'm not what you like, Henry. Um, so raster files would store the store as small images, lots of images. Just many Bob And the Marley. problem is when you're scrolling, many Bob Marley's, <laughs> yeah. When you're scrolling through the Bob Marley years, um, it would take time for them to load, yeah. basically. So it would slow down, and then as a result, it would never be quite high resolution. But vector oh. files, it stores data points instead of information as images, yes, you can imagine. Right. Yeah. So you're having less, uh, less information on your device, but it's got more information yes. points within it. Um, so it's super high res now, so you can zoom, 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 zoom yeah. all the way and see everything. 
Um, wow. it, it sounds pretty amazing actually, yeah. you know, and that's a free update that's wheeled out. So if you use that software anyway, uh, it's fully compatible on Garmin devices as well as Android and iOS. Um, there's a little list at the bottom of the screen because there's so many different Garmin devices it uses. That's a few of them just whizzing by right there. Yes, now we have some bikes from Propane. If you ever need some names for some dash hounds, <laughs> these will be pretty good. We've got the Yuma, the Freck, Freck Drax, 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 and the Drexbats. Yeah. You know. Pretty wild names, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. They're quite catchy, I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> but super cool bikes, quite premium. Dude, kind of I didn't even realise until we looked at the pricing. Mm. Um, so this is a Yuma, it's gravity biased. It's a 140mm travel bike, uh, available in 20 inch and 24 inch. Um, all for 1,799 euros. Um, you better hope that that kid is like the next Steve Pete or the next like, champ out there uh, to warrant a bike like that, I've got to say. Put out an IOU. <laughs> 100% they cash that one in. Um, well, I guess it didn't have to be for them to be champion. It could be for the ice hockey dad, of course, that never lived his life and has to live it for his kid. Well, that's hopefully me one day. <laughs> I'm, I'm not holding back. That kid is going to love yeah. cycling. <laughs> Uh, Fresh Dax is the next one. That's a 20 inch one, uh, 80 mil travel, uh, 1,399. And the final one, the Drex Dre 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 Bats. Bats. Uh, this is yeah. a lightweight bike, so they're kind of covering all bases here. They've got a long travel, mid travel, and a hardtail, really. Oh, cool. Uh, I think that's 749, rigid, as you see it here. And I saw this that with a, a carbon kid specific suspension fork. I had to reread that as well. Yeah. Kid specific carbon suspension fork option, right. yeah. And that's a grand. Like, that's bonkers. That's like three really good bikes with a few options there for kids. Should we be too disparaging with this? Because these are the kids that's gonna say, oh papa, I need the kids carbon specific suspension fork. I know. It's gonna come up and be mountain biking mechanics. Well, <laughs> that, look, look at Jackson Goldston. Like, yeah. like the new breed, as bitter as we may be sat here. <laughs> uh, um, I think we're allowed to be because they're incredible. Yes, uh, they really are. They really what are. they're doing on bikes and um, I guess some of you viewers out there, you're going to have some of those kids that are going to be the next rippers out there. Um, we'd love to see if you've got some kids that rip it on their bikes, uh, send some shots in. More importantly, send them into the Dirt Shed Show because they will love it over there, right up their street. Um, but if you've got a cool tech on your kids' bikes, send them into Top Mods. We'd love to see them here on GMBN Tech. <laughs> Now it is time for bike caves. So, Dolly, you set the bar pretty high just this past weekend, but we've got some actually really, I think some of these could give you one for your money. They're, they're pretty good this week. I had a little flick through. I do agree. There's quite a lot more that have come in as well, actually. <laughs> yeah. So um, make sure you keep them coming in. Um, the address, as always, is at the bottom of the screen right there. Um, let's start off with um, who we got first. So Austin from Salt Lake City in Utah. Um, so. Well, it looks like a spare room to me. It's got carpet in there. Nice, nice and um, pleasing for your bike's Some tires. Skis on the ball, so he's uh, probably cross sport dabbling. So this is where my wife and I store our mountain bikes, road bikes, and our skis. We've got some old racks from a bike shop in town and built-in storage for all of our gear. Helmet bag and shoe storage in the closet with spare goggles hanging at the back of the door. We've also got a sticker board to keep track of where we go. Oh, that's nice. And he's got a little, a little charging station as well. So a functional room, good use of space. I'm quite surprised though that you haven't got a bit of a turbo set up in there as well. Although that said, you live in Utah, so you probably n never need to stay indoors, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you literally have to go outdoors all the time. Huh. Hard life. Pretty cool. A pair of those um, 510 Greg Menard shoes there as well. Oh, the yeah. early editions. They, they were the absolute boys, eh? Yeah. And... Oh, nice, loads of good stuff. It's cool to have a little charging station as well, that's pretty handy. That is actually really good, yeah. Um, it's deceptively tidy. Mm. I'm wondering why it's so tidy and clean in there. Nice, so next we have a submission from Timu, and he is from, oh my, Pete Pike Maski, I'm so sorry, Pike Samaki? Pike Samaki, yeah, Pike Samaki. Right, yeah. Mm. Sorry Timu, and he says, my solution for bike maintenance in an apartment while trying to leave space for other life as well, which is, does sometimes come up. It's a juggle that everyone's got to do, yeah. <laughs> Only washing and other scrubbing has to be done outside. But it does look, the blue light on the board. It does look pretty cool, doesn't it? Looks super cool. I might have to get some neons in my place. Yeah. And a good bit of carpet actually run underneath because you always get like oil coming off the chain and all sorts of stuff. If your bike's wet, it drips everywhere. Bit of a nightmare having to clean up afterwards, so a little strip of carpet is a good touch. 
bike stand looks decent as well. I said yeah. DT forks. And just and just a nice like kind of blanket over the front of the thing. I don't like sometimes seeing shelves. I know what you mean, you yeah. Know, like sometimes it feels yeah. quite club. Yeah. It's super tidy that. Yeah, visually unnoisy. <laughs> yeah. Nice, thanks for sending that one in, Timu. Uh, next up, we've got one from Gregory in Berlin. My God, this is like some sort of bike shrine. My Look at this God. stuff. How much stuff have you got in here? Exactly. This is my cave. It takes more and more shapes since his birthday, nearly five years ago. Fuck my God. You spend a lot of time putting stuff in that room, <laughs> too. Where, where do you live? <laughs> this is just a room for your bikes. Well, I guess that's what a bike cave is supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of the bike at the 45 degree angle above the settee. Yeah. That's, I hope hope you put those screwed in properly, bud. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it looks great. It's like a studio as much as anything, a bit of a showcase of loads of bits and pieces. And something I'm a real big fan of, in his um, cupboard, he's got the bottles where he's drilled the lids into the top, and then you can just screw the base of the bottle in. Ah, uh, yeah. And it's a really yeah, I'll good see that. way. To well, store lots of I've seen people do it underneath the stuff before, but yeah. yeah, in a cup is nice and neat. Oh, so good. Hey, that's a good idea. That's, that's mental. That's so much stuff in there. Looking good, Gregory. Yeah, nice, man. So, next we have one from Michael from uh, Broomfield in Colorado. And he says, This is some pictures of my bike cave that's located in my basement. I broke my shoulder at the end of June, so now I'm at the only riding I've been doing is on my trainer in the bike cave. Normally this is the place where I love to wrench on bikes, watch GMBN and other bike videos. It's a work in progress, but it's working for me now. I built the workbench myself and picked up some shelves and cabinet for storage. And it's, yeah, again, looking good. I really like a good, um, maybe not so common with mountain bikers, but a nice indoor training area yeah. for winter months and yeah. stuff like that. Having it always set up is just... It's something I've never bothered to set up, but I really regret not doing it last winter. Yeah. I'm definitely going to do something this year. I fancy him that as with the crack. Yeah. Conceptually, I don't really quite, understand yes. it, but yeah, I mean, how hard can it be? I, it's got to be more <laughs> motivational than just grinding away on a turbo. Actually yeah. visually racing people. So yeah, totally. Got to be good. Yeah. Uh, guessing that's what you've got there. You've got your TV set up, your GMBN tech on there. Yeah. Nice to see. And a laptop over the side, so it must be feeding off that. Nice park tools work stand. Man, you've got a lot of stuff in there as well, actually. I'm quite impressed by the sheer amount of stuff. The quality of the bike caves this week. Yeah. I reckon you've, you've made them raise the bar there, Doddy. Well, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite pleased about that because the yeah. whole point is it really doesn't matter what you have. Like that dude's bedroom, we've completely loaded like a shrine a minute ago. Yeah. And then this one's more like an actual garage. This is great. Keep them coming in. Love seeing all this stuff. All right, now it's time for Rewind. You know the drill. This is where we talk about all the old retro stuff in mountain biking. If you've got anything retro or anything you can talk to us about or you want us to tell you about, maybe the progression of old stuff into new stuff that you ride today, um, ask away in the comments underneath. Use the hashtag rewind or alternatively, if you've got anything to send in, use our uploader right there on the screen. This one's a bit of a special one. This is from an industry friend of mine called Pete Drew. He works for UK distributor Silverfish. Oh, cool. They do like uh, Yeti, Rocky, uh, actually, Mondraker as uh, well. Raceface. I like I said Rocky Man. Uh, Mondraker. <laughs> yeah, do a whole bunch of good stuff. And recently he was over in Boulder in Colorado. Oh, wow. And he popped in to see the guys at the Pros Closet. Now, I don't know if you know about this, but YouTube channel and they do loads of cool retro stuff. But I didn't realize they had an actual unit full of this stuff. And here's just a bit of a gallery that Pete sent some pictures from. He says, dude, you guys need to do a video on the guys over the pros closet in Boulder. I was staying a block away visiting Scratch Labs and dropped in. Their retro collection is nuts. And the very first picture is one of those breezers. It looks like one of the original oh, yes. ones. With the continuous oh, man. Yeah. Um, so straight away, they're super serious about having, <laughs> having a collection. Uh, that's an old Eto helmet. So they were adjustable. I don't know if you've ever seen those before. That's the newer shape. Right. The original shape was literally like half a bowling ball. Yeah, yeah. A bit, thing. bit like um, that sh the mushroom out of uh, Mario Kart. Exactly like yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> and with <laughs> Allen keys, you could tighten them and change, oh, the, no way. change the shape of the helmet. I didn't realise that. And I think that's what this band is on this one here, which is the newer shape. And then that's John Tomac's old Bell Image. I think it's a Bell Image helmet with a Troy Lee Designs Peak and custom paint job. We always used to do the American Eagle on his. Um, one of Missy Jovi's Yeti Arc bikes. Uh, is that a Manatee 3 on there? I forget, to be honest. Um, Grafton Cranks, Ringlay Seat Post. It's just, it's really cool to see the stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what that is. Uh, a 1985 Velocitech. The original mullet bike. That, 
Look at the length of the chain stays on that thing. Yeah, that's how you like them though, isn't it? I do like a long <laughs> chain stay, to be fair. Make them yeah. longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair handling was great with that. Um, a Ooh. Kleiner draw, so this would have been super light. So that's one of Tinker Juarez's um, Mother race May bikes. I. That's incredible. Yeah, they were famous for having, well, A, being super light and B, having crazy paint jobs. So this one was like a storm kind of going on. I guess there's sponsor stickers all over it that cover some of it up. They also had their own headset system and a bar and stems called Mission Control. And it's a one-piece design. Super light, like ridiculously light. Um, quite cool to see that. Mm, in super these. cool. Um, Ned over and specialized M2 from 1992. Um, there's an original Manitou up at the top before they made full suspension bikes. That's a rigid one. Um, another bike, I'm not even sure what this is. It, just, it looks amazing, whatever it is. Polished. It's a bit, a bit of a bizarre head tube situation, I guess. <laughs> yeah. At the last minute, they decided they wanted a taller head tube. Yeah, um, well. So, so just stuck one on and figured a way around. <laughs> it's uh, better than one of their stereo expanders. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. yeah. Even. At least it's part of the frame. <laughs> yeah. uh, Steve Potts limited edition bike. There's a whole wall of helmets. In fact, that's those other Eto helmets. Oh, yes. They were famed in the pink one. You see everyone wearing those. Alpine Stars helmet at the top there. Um, one of those awful early specialized helmets I, I used to have. Um, that makes you look like Mario. <laughs> Julie Furtado's 1990 Yeti Fro. Um, in fact, that's the same set of forks I've got hanging up in my workshop. I've got the black ones. Neon yellow was always cooler. Cunningham, I've never seen one of those in the flesh. Gnarly little bike and little Pashley 24M as well. Oh, well, Pashley from where I'm from. Yeah, lovely looking Eddie, bikes. Eddie Tongue was it? That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, apparently still shreds. I saw um, Chris Ackwig posted something about oh, yeah. him on Instagram the other day. Yeah, nice. Those two as a combo together, just insane what they can do on bikes. Uh, but yeah, a really cool little selection there from Pete. Thanks, dude, for sending those in. Um, if we're ever lucky enough to be out in Colorado, Colorado even, I'd love to come and see you guys over at the Pros Closet. Um, if you watch this by any chance, get in touch. I'd love to hear from you in those comments underneath. Maybe we can hook something up. Okay, for top mods this week, and I want to talk about my own personal bike. This is my Nukeproof Mega 290. Uh, yeah, of course, this is the big XL with the 29-inch wheels. Um, you might notice I've got gold chainring on here. Um, pretty much, I'd worn out my chain cassette. I'd smashed the rear derailleur when out, uh, out do it, so I replaced all of that. But I couldn't find the right chainring, so it had a 30-tooth XT chainring, which was just too small for me, but I ran it until it was knackered. I wanted to put a 32 or a 34 on here. Couldn't find anything in stock anywhere online. And uh, I just happened to speak to a friend of mine who works for a company called Absolute Black. And he persuaded me to try one of their oval rings. Now we've spoken about oval rings quite a lot in the past and I've not spent a lot of time on them previously because I've, I can spin quite a good circle. I've never had the need to have one, but I thought I'd try a 32 on here. But being a 32, it's actually equivalent of a 34 in the sizing where it nearly would hit the chain. So it's something you have to bear in mind with oval rings when you buy them because they're actually bigger than they might seem in a single direction because of that elliptical shape. So I've gone for the 32 here and I've actually got one of their chain guides here, which just allows for the movement up and down. It's got a taco on the bottom. Now it's quite interesting how this actually feels. I can notice this completely all the time. Um, I'm so tuned into the way that I pedal. I've been riding bike a long time, so I feel like I spin a really good circle, but I'm gonna persist with this just to give it a bit of a try. There's something that I did notice that was a marked improvement actually over a regular chain ring, very limited thing mind, was I was in a, on a ride a couple of weeks back at Avon in Wales, and I went a bit off piece to try and find some cut throughs to take me back to sections of trail that I liked. I ended up going up this really steep fire road I was in my lowest gear and I couldn't help but wheel spin if I went up there on my normal bike, but I did notice the power application is a little bit different. It did enable me just to keep pedaling over some of that loose stuff. So I can see some benefits to this, although I have to say, I don't like the way it feels. So kind of interested, but just a little top mod that I um, just wanted to tell you about I've done on my bike. You might see something strange on the front of my bike here, uh, hanging out the front. This is something I'm gonna pick up in a couple of weeks on the show when I've got the photo sorted out. This is my method of taking a selfie whilst riding a bike. So I've made myself a little remote lever. You can just about see here, this is a push to close button that I've soldered onto a 3.5 mil jack cable by cutting the end off. I've got it twirled around my brake hose and going into a pocket wizard, which I've mounted to my handlebars using a bit of a brake clamp and a bit of an old Hope bike light um, clamp there. And it basically communicates with the pocket wizard that goes on my camera that I set up with a tripod or a Gorillapod 
out on the trail in my desired place and um, snap some photos. So uh, once I've got some of those photos, we'll pick it up again and I'll just tell you about how that works. Uh, well, there you go. There's a few random top mods from myself this week. Uh, don't forget to send your top mods in. The address is at the bottom of the screen right there. You can also email them to us at hellotech at gmbn.com. So now it's time for tech of the week and we've got, oh, this is tech all right. Now, Doddy, as you know, I get a crippling shyness when talking about suspension settings. I can never really find the words. I've tried to interpret it and everything from dance to oil paintings, but I think I've finally found the tool. It's a soundboard. What is that on your screen? Yeah. But basically, I'm going to give you an array of symptoms okay. and descriptions of my problems, and hopefully okay. you can feed it back from the setup. It uses clips from Loris Vergier's setup. Ah, OK. He's good with his sound effects, yep. So when I'm going a bit hard, I do a bit of but then sometimes if I'm going through some real rough braking bumps, it's a bit <laughs> And also I'm getting a bit of What would you recommend? Was that? that was I don't know, at the end of my stroke I'll just get a Um it sounds like a couple of volume spaces I reckon yeah. and three clicks of uh, high speed rebound. Okay. I should I should sort that out. I think that's got it. I think that's got it. Then I'll be a bit of <laughs> I don't even know what to I, I, think, I, I think you need to go to the doctors and have a new clacker valve fitted for that one. <laughs> but yeah, check out this website. Somebody has painstakingly gone through all the <laughs> Fox, they did that kind of web series at World yeah. Cups, and just... And resampled it, basically. He resampled yeah. Loris Vergier's, all of his noises, and some of them are just... <laughs> fantastic. So thank you to whoever put in the hard work. Um, what an amazing stalker. <laughs> yeah. No, fair play, that is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> So that's it for another week's tech show. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you even see that notification bell button, hit it because then you'll know every time we put out a video. Ding ding. So I'm going to throw to that, well, your bike cave. Oh, which cool. Which was yeah. pretty impressive. That went out at the weekend and is really worth getting a cup of tea, sitting down, watching it properly. It's really, really good. So click down there for that one. I'm going to throw you to something I'm actually going to try myself, having watched Henry's video all about it. Um, the chain loop experiment, which is right down here. This is super nerdy, but actually really quite interesting, the sort of the effects of different lubricants and oils and stuff on your chain. Uh, check it out.